from our narrow end of the long funnel of world history, but to understand Jesus' ministry in the context of what his teachings meant to the Jews in his day, to those who were raised with both the instructions in the Torah and subject to the diverse religious systems that dominated first century Israel, we need to view the events recorded in the Gospels from their perspective. We are going back to the time long before the Gospels were written at the end of the first century. We are going back to the time that nobody called him Jesus Christ. It amuses me when I hear people speak of Jesus Christ as if he were the son of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Christ. They speak of Jesus Christ as a carpenter, and I imagine a wood sign outside their shop in Nazareth that read, Joseph Christ and Sons Carpentry. That doesn't make any sense because in the Greek version of the Gospels, he is called a technon, a technical builder. And they built with stone in those days. Wood was scarce and used for temporary forms and scaffolding, but not for building. Maybe the sign read, Joseph Christ and Sons General Contractors. The pilgrims brought the 1560 Geneva Bible with them when they started their colony in the New World. Iesus, I-E-S-U-S, was the name that they were familiar with. And in the name of Jesus, they prayed and received the miracle that saved their lives. Every Thanksgiving Day, we celebrate their rescue by Squanto, a freed Native American Indian slave who came back to the continent as a Christian, who was introduced to Jesus by his former master in England. When the letter J was added to the English alphabet, it was placed after the letter I. I was pronounced as a vowel, I, and J was pronounced as a hard consonantal Y, Y. In 1611, the name now spelled Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, was pronounced as Jesus, the same as when it was spelled I-E-S-U-S. In modern English, the vowels are A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y, because sometimes Y is pronounced as a vowel, as in jelly, and other times it is pronounced as a consonant, as in yellow. The letter J has recently taken on a sound for which it was never designed, and is still not used in Europe. Yugoslavia is spelled with a capital J, and only Americans mispronounce it as Jugoslavia. Jesus is as close to his Hebrew name, Yeshua, as the Greek language allows. In the English transliteration of his Greek name, I-E is pronounced as Ye, but there is no letter equivalent to the Hebrew letter Shin or the Sh sound in Greek. And though Sus, means horse in Hebrew and pig in Latin. In Greek, sus is a common substantive that is required to provide the declension of a noun to indicate case or number. Iesua, though a bit more accurate, really does not work in Greek. Thus, Jesus. But again, no one by the name of Jesus or Jesus was ever born in Israel. Before the birth of the child, the angel Gabriel came to Yosef with this instruction. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." Yosef was to call his name Jesus for what reason? He shall save his people from their sins? What does the name Jesus have to do with saving his people? It doesn't. Not in English, not in Greek, not in Aramaic, or any other language on the planet other than Hebrew. In Genesis 3.20, Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. This makes no sense in English, but in Hebrew, it is a common figure of speech, a word pun. 
He called her name Hava because she was the mother of all Chai. Or in English, Adam called her Livy because she was the mother of all living. In the second century, Papias, a disciple of the gospel author, John, stated that Matthew wrote his gospel in the Hebrew language, and several did their best to translate it. Early church historians acknowledged the fact several times in their writings, and Eusebius, the court bishop of Constantine, said that he saw a copy of the Hebrew Matthew, but was unable to read it. It was thought that all copies of the Hebrew Matthew had been expunged under the bloody reign of Diocletian, but it unexpectedly survived in the covert archives of Jewish scribes. To this date, a total of 28 manuscript copies of the Hebrew Matthew have been located among ancient Jewish manuscripts scattered around the globe. The ancient Hebrew Matthew tells a story that cannot be appreciated in either the Aramaic or Greek translations of Matthew. And at the time Matthew was finally translated into English, the importance of his name was completely lost. The angel Gabriel's instructions to Yosef in the ancient Hebrew Matthew reads, you shall call his name Yeshua for Yoshia. The words he will save is one word in Hebrew, Yoshia. Yeshua means Yehovah saves. Yoshia means he will save. Yeshua, Yoshia. From this point on, we are going to call him by the name given to him by heaven. Not the name given by Greeks, the English, or by those who mispronounced the letter J. Heaven sent a messenger to earth with the divine instruction to call him Yeshua. Why? Because Yoshia, he will save his people from their sins. The angel 